Hello, everybody. I'm Kristen. And I'm Rachel. And this is why I'm watching Gilmore Girls, Season 1, Episode 16, Star-Crossed Lovers and Other Strangers. <sighs> Hold on to your tits, y'all, because we're going to be tangenting all <laughs> over the place today. I, I feel like you are more than I am. <sighs> this show just loves to trigger me! Because, this is, hey, guys, that's exactly what my very first boyfriend did to me because I didn't immediately say, I love you back. He was your first boyfriend? First real boyfriend. Okay. The was that guy, still high school? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, no, uh-uh. 19. After? Okay. Because there was one boy that I dated when I was a sophomore, and I think he told me he loved me, and I was just like, go back. And I was <laughs> like, you, you just never saw me again. <laughs> This was my first, like, grown-up, I say this because we were having sex, and so that, like, makes things weird. But so he said that he loved me, and I, like, kind of took a second, and he was like, do you love me too? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, you either love me or you don't. And I was like, well, this is just, like, really important. He was like, do you not feel that way about me? And I was like, no, I do. I just, I care about you a lot. He was like, well, if you don't love me and I love you, like, there's no reason why we should keep dating. So we should just break up. And I was like, ah! And so then I said it. And I immediately felt gross because I was like, this feels really hollow. I don't know. I feel really confused. And also remember, guys, he had a lot of issues and was an alcoholic. And I'm at 19 and I tried to break up with him all the time. But he literally would be like, I'll die. And so I was like, I don't know what to do. (laughs) Oh, no. And then so a couple months later, Mm -hmm. I was at his house again. And so we were like laying in bed. And I started to cry. And he was like, what's the matter? And I was like, I just really do love you. And so then he was like, just now you realize that? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, no, I mean, I've loved you the whole time. I just like, it just really hit me. And he was like, so have you been lying to me? Oh my God, no. For many months. And I was like, no. And we, he was like, get out of my house. And I Bro. was like, what? No, okay, that's too much. And then we dated over two more years. No, okay, <laughs> that's on you. That's partially on you. Because, again, I cannot stress enough to you, if you leave me, Rachel, I will die. Okay. All the time. <laughs> okay, so die. i like... Listen, I haven't gotten <laughs> No, I know, yet. I know, I know. I haven't had anyone die on me yet. No, I, I get At it. this point, I'm like, just fucking do it. I don't care. I get it, I get but it. But no, it was like, and literally, because his family was like, if you leave him, he will die. No, Everyone you... was like, if you leave him, he will die. The family can't get in it. Okay. <laughs> You guys, I've had a hard yeah. time. No, it's a no for me. All of that is, no, all of it is a no for so, me. Okay, we we should probably talk about this because uh, I want to go through that entire scene. Okay. Uh, because it, it just is. So basically the gist is the town is doing the uh, Founders Firelight Festival. Which looks darling. It's adorable. There's multiple Founders Day festivals throughout the series. I don't mess with small towns. Yeah. I would move here in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. I loved it. It's so cute. Darling. Yeah. Incredible. And it's, well, we already have talked about it because it's like 30 minutes to Hartford. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. No, NBD. Good. I could do it. Yeah. And it's like not, it's not far enough to New York that they couldn't get there on a weeknight, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. So like, whatever. Okay. So it's the Founders Day Festival, which Patty does, has like a nice little opening monologue, which is ba- essentially like a Romeo and Juliet type of thing about two people from like neighboring counties to a, a boy and a girl who fell in love with each other and they met. And, like, we're drawn to their secret meeting place by the starlight. And that's why it's called Stars Hollow. And they, like, met, you know, supposedly right where the gazebo stands today. So they're all doing that. Lorelai is having a hard time because everybody's being very lovey-dovey. And she's crabby. And Max is gone. And she hasn't spoken to him and stuff. And she's lonely. I love that Rory calls her out when she was like, you can call him. Yeah. She's like, no. Yeah. It's like, no, phones work both ways. Yeah. And then, meanwhile, it is going to be Rory and Dean's three months a- three month anniversary, and so Rory needs to get out of Friday night dinner to go on this date that he has planned. Very little notice to her, mm-hmm. like two days, maybe. I would I would give him like Monday to Friday, yeah. but still, that's like a short amount of time for him having already planned everything out. Mm-hmm. I don't like Dean. Well, he obviously planned. It's not about her. It's about yeah. him. Uh-huh. So he spent yeah. all the time planning. She just, she's just extra. Yeah. And then, so he's like, look at me. Look what I did. Yeah. And then, oh, by the way, can you come? <laughs> Gross. I hate, I hate Dean. It's from here on. 
Well, because even when they were at the dinner and he was like being cute or whatever, I was like, I don't like it. You were like, I have a bad vibe. Yeah, I was like, I don't trust it. It just, it felt weird. Well, you were like, I feel, you were like, I feel like he's going to say something weird. Yeah. Like, in the, and I was like, no, not yet. And I was like, he's definitely not going to do something bad yet. No, I just, it didn't, it felt hollow. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, if you want to talk about that the most, then let's do the other stuff. Okay. So basically the other thing too is that Lorelai goes to the diner partway through because Suki hasn't made any coffee because she's too busy schmoozing with- uh and jackson and so she goes to the diner and wouldn't you know who shows up luke's ex-girlfriend rachel she is beautiful isn't she she's cute yeah i hate that she's called it the mid-east who says mid-east middle east well middle east never i don't know maybe she was in virginia no, she said no. Palestine. I know, I know. <laughs> but he's still no, gross. Mid- Mid-Atlantic. <laughs> well, but it's like, it all, it just felt very like, hmm, small town. Like, oh, oh yeah. I was, I was at the Mideast. Yeah. She is kind of like that. She does seem kind of the worst. She's, like, actually great. But, but like, in a way that's like, you're just the worst. It's, like, a little patronizing. Yeah. But she sticks around for a little while, and she's generally nice and like lovely uh she's a photographer and i do love that i don't remember the second place but luke is like weren't you in like darfur or philadelphia Uh, the congo (laughs) the congo or philadelphia and she goes well despite how like both of those cities where i was is it was actually the middle east uh so that's great luke and lorelei are both super awkward around her Mm -hmm. which is funny yes and actually, I, I did love the, I love the conversation that Rachel and Luke have at the bonfire, mm-hmm. where she's like, what's going on with you and Lorelai? And he's like, honest. He's like, sometimes I think maybe, but then like, no. And so it's like, they're really honest with each other in that moment. Yeah. And I do love too, that she just was like, I just missed you. And I wanted to come see you. Because while she is kind of like a flighty, flippity gibbet. It's just, you know, sometimes you're just like, I miss my small town boyfriend. Yeah. And I think it was just, I I just love the honesty that they both, like, had with each other. And the fact that she was, like, willing to listen to him talk about another woman. Yeah. Like, hello. Well, because, I mean, point one in her corner, because because I think she just is aware. Mm -hmm. She's just like, this was not for me, and I'm very honest about it, and I wanted something more, so I can't. I don't know. She just seems like a realist, but in a healthy way. Yeah. Other than that, Lorelai still has to go to dinner, Friday night dinner, because Rory does get out of Friday night dinner, so she can go on her date. Uh, But Lorelai still has to go, and it turns out Emily has invited a man. What's his name? What was his name? Um, Chase. Chase Bradford. Gross. (laughs) Just, like, wall-to-wall terrible. And he is, like, an actuary. I think that's what he was. Boy. Is he pompous and horrible? And Emily is like, he's good looking. And I'm like, no, he's not. Well, Lorelai calls him like Hartford Ken or something yeah. like that. And that is a very apt description. For sure. sure. Yeah. He just is very, like, I feel like he smiles with too much teeth in photographs. Mm-hmm. It was just, it's just awful. And he's being. I am a human. Human, yeah. And he's. he's human man. He's doing too much in the face you shrieked when he like reached his hand no, across the it, way it was like this he was like come <laughs> like it was he did he like close what what is this <laughs> it's gross ew and then it, he like went dead in the eyes it was like yeah. shark eye. yeah Ugh. he's he's literally awful and so basically lorelei's like i'm gonna go freshen up and then she starts sneaking out her bedroom window and richard finds her and she goes on this long thing about how, like, she's really sorry that they fought, and she knows that sneaking out her window must bring back so many terrible memories from her childhood and everything like that. But the guy, because she and Richard are, like, making eyes at each other the entire time about mm-hmm. how terrible this is, because Richard didn't know he was coming. Emily did it all behind the scenes, and I just love that they, even though they're kind of mad at each other, they, they like, have this thing, oh, yeah. the two of them. and. She basically is like, I cannot sit with that man for, like, another second. Don't make me go back down there. And then he just calls down to Emily that she's not there, and Lorelai continues to sneak away. That's one of my favorite scenes in their relationship. Mm -hmm, I like that a lot. It's so cute. Because, like, Richard definitely understands her. Oh, yeah. And I think that's part of the problem. 
mm-hmm. is that he does get it. Mm-hmm. But it's like... He t- still chooses not to. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I absolutely love that. I think it's fantastic. Oh, so even Michelle was, like, on the phone with a date. And so, Lorelai, just, like, the whole, like, Suki, Michelle, Rory's going on this date, the whole thing is, like, even Lane is going on a date, even though it's, like, with a Korean boy and his entire family. Oh, my God. It was just a parade <laughs> of Korean people. <laughs> it's right through the center of the- so, It was so crazy. <laughs> and then, like, Tristan and what's-her-name were making out all over the lockers. Her name is Summer. Mm-hmm. Um, She... I think she's actually only in the next episode as well, which I like. I like the next episode. But yes, they are making out. And I do love this moment of solidarity between Rory and Paris that, like, their lockers are right next to each other. And they're the lockers that Tristan has very purposefully decided to make out in front of with Summer. And then I love that he breaks the make out just to be like, hi, Paris. Yeah. Like, go fuck <laughs> yourself, dude. <laughs> Ew, I cannot stand him. Okay. He's better, honestly, though. He's better than Dean. Dean okay. can go kick rock. Uh, that is not that is not a compliment. No, no, I'm aware. But I don't I don't hate him as much. I'm aware. I would like you to keep an open mind for the next episode. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I would like you to keep an open mind. Okay. Also, j- like j- you're never I mean, spoiler alert, Dean and Rory get back together. But like this is th- this moment. I was like, "Oh, gross!" And I never, I don't ever like him again. No, never, ever, ever. No, because it. W- w- yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> so, um, besides that, oh, there's also a, a Madeline is throwing a party. Yes, the next night. That's important because it's the next episode. Oh, okay. Taylor wasn't. No, he wasn't doing anything stupid. But like, uh, after. Dean and Rory's date, which actually looks darling. He takes her to, like, a fancy Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. It looks really cute. Her dress is adorable. Hot pink, like, halter neck thing. Love it. She, like, Lorelai asks her to, like, bring home a spare meatball, and, like, literally nobody gets it, but she, like, orders it and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they get to the fire, or the Founders Parade, or, um, it's not a parade. Founders Night? Festival, just a festival? I guess, yeah. Firelight Festival? Yes, Founders Firelight Festival. So they they end up there, and then the mayor is making, like, a speech, and then as soon as he's done, Rory's like, okay, come show me the second part of the surprise, and he's like, I thought you wanted to watch the bonfire, and she goes, oh, it's gonna take forever, don't even worry about it, and apparently every single year, no one remembers to bring matches, or, like, some kind of fire to light the bonfire. Um, so he takes her to the junkyard, a little dicey. Mm -hmm. She's wearing heels, open-toed shoes, Mm -hmm. too. If he cared about her, he would have said, bring a second pair of shoes. That's it. He brings her to a car. It's actually very sweet. He is building this car for her. He found, like, basically a scrapped out, you know, chassis of a car, and he's gonna build it for her, and he's already done a handful of things. She's very excited about it. Then they get in the car, and they sit, and they're just staring up at the stars. Super cute. And then he says, I love you. And she's like, oh. Which, like... And then I love the car. Yes. But also, like, I need you to be so fucking for real right now. Your girlfriend didn't know you were coming up on your three-month anniversary, and you expect her on a dime to be able to respond to I love you? Uh. Mm -hmm. Uh. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, when she explains herself... Which I think she does... she well, does perfectly. Yeah. She when she said, "You know this stuff is hard for me." Yeah. If you knew your girlfriend, yeah, she is not an emotional sharer. She yeah. is not. She doesn't like. Yeah. It doesn't come from here. Yeah. She is in her brain all the time. All the time. So why would you hold that against her when she needs to take a beat and then throw in her face that she has to go home and talk to her mom about it? Ew! Absolutely unacceptable. Because, like, so the fuck what if I want to talk to my mom about my feelings? It's what I've always done. And then it's like, oh, so we have to go home and talk to your mom about it, and then you have to make one of your pros and cons lists? And be like, so then you are just going to name things about me, attributes about me. That you clearly find offensive, yeah. And then throw that in my face because I'm not responding the way you want me to? Go fuck yourself. So here's the thing. I didn't... I'm, I might have. I actually don't remember who said I love you first. Mm-hmm. It took a long time for us because we were, like, he was very 
uh, cautious mm -hmm. at the beginning, which is whatever. But I loved him immediately because we were friends. I loved him as a friend for like two years. And then we started dating and I was like, cool. I'm in love with you. <laughs> like, I was like, we're good. Just FYI. And so like, I don't know. I don't actually know who said it first, but I think he knew I loved him before mm -hmm. he like said it back. And I just think that's okay. Yeah. You can love her and she can still be catching up. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, it's I, just not that serious. Also, you're yeah. 16. Yeah. I have, I have been the one to say I love you first once. And I think going back and like thinking about it, I, you know, I was in a very unhealed place and I think I, I very much was like in a, um, I have talked about this with you before, but very much like, are you my mother type of sure. like, like Dr. Seuss, <laughs> yeah. where it was like, are you my soulmate? Are you my soulmate? <laughs> Whatever. And I, and I really truly did have love for that person. And I did very much care about him. Um, it took him a minute to say it back to me. Yeah. Um, which at like the time was a little hurtful, but I also was like, he's also kind of going through stuff too. But any other time, because was I that had, the last boyfriend? Yes. And then um the ex-husband, he said, I love you first, and I paused and he got a little weird about it. I just and then I said it, and as soon as and I I really I've learned that I need to listen to myself yeah. because my body went you danger, need to, danger, you danger. You need to Homer Simpson in the yeah. bushes more often. Yeah, I know. Because it, I said it back, but I remember it feeling hollow in my mouth. Yeah. And, but it was like, this is safer if I just say it because I won't get in trouble later. Woof. I know. Yeah. Like, mm, yeah. But so I, but I think you're right. And I'm actually looking forward to the next time yeah. I get to say that to someone or someone says it to me because I want to see how that feels sure. to just be like honoring my feelings if yeah. I'm not there yet. But then it's just like. But because I feel like there just should be there. It just should be allowed to be like, oh my God, I care about you so much. I'm not sure I'm quite there yet. Yeah. But like, let's continue. Because when Laura or when Rory was like, that's that's such a big thing to say yeah. and it's such a big feeling to have that's perfectly acceptable to say well and also the way that she did compare it back to Lorelai she's like my mom and dad said they loved each other and then she, you know she got pregnant and he's he said saying I love you doesn't get you pregnant and she's like no I know but like the things it leads to it's like come on it's, it's heavy yeah it's heavy love makes things complicated and we should teach our people yeah. like our children that when we teach all of these love stories and whatever this is a big deal and you're allowed to take a second 100 percent, because it is absolutely you know you you say it all the time it's like the feeling of falling in love is the same as dying or something like that okay no they've done studies on it and the like the butterflies the like heart palpitations the like stomach in your butt kind of stuff mm -hmm. those feelings that we consider falling in love are chemically identical to when you are afraid for your life. Yes. And I find that fascinating. And so we should be able to take a beat yeah. and be able to kind of like think back to those feelings where it's like, is this a good feeling or a bad feeling? Yeah. Because when I get those butterflies, there is a difference between the good butterflies and the bad butterflies. For sure. Now I know yeah. that. I didn't know that for a yeah. very, very, very long time because no one explained that to me. Yeah. Because we don't, we don't teach our girls that. There's also one of the things, this is slightly, like, just a little bit off, shifted off topic, but, like, one of my favorite things I've ever heard was um, Kristen Bell was on Dax's podcast for something. They were doing, like, a bunch of people, and she was talking about the difference between dopamine and oxytocin. Mm hmm and she basically, because she, she was trying to explain it to their girls, mm -hmm. and she was like, when you, like, look at your iPad or, like, do whatever, that's a hit of dopamine. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, not as long-lasting. But she's like, when I hug you for a really long time, like, when we have a nice hug, that's oxytocin. Mm -hmm. It gives you, like, a feeling of safety. It's not just a feeling of, like, excitement. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, there just is such a difference between that, where it's like, on the one hand, you you kind of have to give it to Dean for, like, being open with his feelings and, yeah. like, and being the one to, like, make himself vulnerable first. Yes. You have to give him a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't even mind his, like, a, like a general, not, because I, okay, I, I really mind the irritation, but I don't mind, he's clearly got his feelings hurt. Yeah. 
But also, like, you have to be ready for that response. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with being vulnerable that yeah. keeps people from being vulnerable. It's you like, have to be ready for the bad yeah. response, too. Yeah, because, yeah, you do. Yeah. Because that's the risk of yeah. putting yourself out there. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't work out. But the fact that she was like, I I care about you. Like, yeah. it's clear that she has feelings for him. Like, she's not, you know not giving him or not paying him any mind like she was so happy and she kept saying she was so happy and it was yeah. so great the dinner was great the yeah. car is amazing and yeah. she likes him so much and like the fact that she shares books with him like there are ways that she shows that she loves him and cares about mm -hmm. him but he's being a tool bag because it's not in the way that he thinks he should de he deserves yes also let's go back to the books because she has lent him Anna Karenina. Mm -hmm. He is also what appears to be like 60 pages from the end of that book. You just finish it. You are so close. And all he can do is complain. Yeah. About, ugh, she threw herself under a train. And, ugh, the names are all too similar. And, ugh, it's like, I don't know if, like, Tolstoy's for me. And I'm like, it's not. You're a fucking moron. Tolstoy's not for you. Stop pretending you're a book person. I, yeah. I seriously forget every time I start this show that they try to make Dean a book person at the beginning. Because he's not. He is... He is a book person, but he's an, a Hunter S. Thompson book person. Oh, barf. Yeah. Th that is what it is. He is... Yeah. And then you know he loves Bukowski or whatever the fuck his name is. Okay. Um, They kind of all like Bukowski. Like, uh, Rory doesn't love him, but you, I can't wait for you to meet Jess. Because, like, there's one scene where Jess and Rory are arguing about, like, Jane Austen versus Bukowski. Mm -hmm. Like, because that's, like, each of their kind of, like, one of their favorites or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's just such a more mature and interesting conversation than any conversation that Dean has with her about books. Yeah. And I and I know that I'm I'm sounding a little glib and flippant, you know, about the Hunter I've never I'm also I've never read Anna Karenina, so yeah, like I'm I, not saying I have it. Yeah. But I also I got it because you know Barnes Noble does like mm -hmm. the fancy book covers. I have it because um there was for a while They're like was penguin like, classics. Yeah, yeah, but it was like to make it into a clutch. Ooh. And I just never did, yeah. so I just have it. Also, like the movie that Joe Wright made with Kira Knightley is, oh, is just so good. That like incredible. <laughs> but um, I don't like. I don't mean to take anything away from Hunter S. Thompson, but it it feels very like boy book, kind of like Fight Club. Yeah, it's it is very that. And okay, it's, where it's like red, like a red flag author. Okay, hold on. First of all. I could drop a ton of acid in the desert and write an incoherent novel, too. Yeah. So, like... Yeah. Hold on one second. I'm going to try and find something. Um, I dropped a little acid, and my brain was humongous. Oh, shit. There's, like... There's, like, a scene from Freaks and Geeks that is so spectacular. And I think it's talking about Allen Ginsberg. Mm -hmm. um, but I But it might actually be Hunter S. Thompson. Um, and basically... The teacher asks Kim, who's Busy Phillips' character, who's, she's kind of a burnout mm -hmm. with, like, the rest of them. Um, she, he, the teacher is like, hey, what did you think of the book or whatever? And she was like, I don't know. I didn't even finish it. It didn't make any sense. Like, I didn't connect with anything, blah, 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 whatever. And so the teacher is, like, berating her. And it's like, that's unbelievable. I can't believe you didn't finish it. And, like, you cl clearly have no interest in all, you know, all the stuff that teachers say to burnout kids in TV shows. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Lindsay, who is Linda Cardellini's character, is like, um, actually, because it might be Hunter S. Thompson, actually. I don't remember if, if it's Fear and Loathing, but regardless, she's like, um, actually, no, the author was high on, like, mushrooms and acid the entire time he wrote this, and, like, someone like Hemingway or something actually just was like, that's not writing, it's typing. And so she just, like, sticks up for Kim in that mm -hmm. moment, and it just reminds me of the exact same thing where it's like, just because this is for boys doesn't make it better. Yeah. It's like, oh, so you took a mind-altering substance that made you kind of take a step back and you actually got to look at your feelings from up above yeah. without feeling any of the feelings. And then you had all these fucking brain gasms about it. Oh, good for you. Well, you just wrote a, like, stream of consciousness nonsense and you got it published because you're a man? No, thank you. Yeah. When I was on acid, I helped my brother <laughs> and sister-in-law work through some of their stuff. And I was like, man, how come I'm not having a breakthrough? And my brother was like, it's because you're, what's his name from Lost? Jack? Jack from Lost. Oh. 
Yes. And I was like, what? And he was like, it's because you focus on everyone except yourself. And I was oh. like, I'm too high for this right now. Yeah. <laughs> I actually saw another interesting thing on TikTok the other day where somebody was like, why do, why do men have to experiment with a class one narcotics in order to find empathy? Right. But then a man stitched it and was like, I'll tell you exactly why. And he was like, I know I have empathy because, and then he told a story about, like, being so sad that, like, I don't know, a squirrel died or something when he was a little boy. But then the way that boys are socialized, this empathy gets stamped out of oh, you. Oh, yeah, completely. And so then once you open your brain back up with, like, ecstasy or mushrooms or whatever, mm-hmm. you, like, reconnect with that empathy. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it's just because it's considered vulnerable and female that, like men don't exhibit empathy but like everyone is capable of feeling empathy unless 100%. you are have like a literal psychosis yeah it was just like it was very fascinating there's also i think it's not till season three or four but there's an episode of dawson's creek that's similar where joey goes away for like a college um like tour like a weekend where they like stay in a dorm and everything mm-hmm. and she actually gets placed with this um, with a boy because the, the oh they thought it was a boy the admissions Joey. thing said mm-hmm. Potter comma Joe yeah yeah or Joseph mm-hmm. um and so he basically lets her sit in on a class that he TAs for and asks her favorite book and she says Little Women mm-hmm. and he goes on this fucking rampage about how it's like nothing no book and like blah 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 whatever and so later he she tells him why and it's because her dead mom used to read it to her when she was a little girl and she's named after joe from the book and everything and he feels so bad and then he takes her to see the college's like first edition copy of little women but i'm just like you guys like i'm begging you to understand that all of jane austen is satire about society and like you know the gothic romances are metaphors and you're killing me it's just killing me completely well, and I just, because we talked about it and because I saw on TikTok probably um, someone saying that readers create empathetic people. Mm-hmm. And if Dean is supposed to be a bookish person, he should feel more feelings of understanding yeah. for Rory. Uh-huh. He's fake. He's, He's cosplaying awful. being a reader. He's awful. I- I hate it. I'm so well, mad. So it's also like once they do bring Jess in, Dean becomes even more of kind of like a meathead type Great. of character. <laughs> can't wait. Because we can't have two smart boys vying for her affection. Why? No, it doesn't. Yeah. Because what? I mean, uh, well, I mean, there's like copious amounts of media showing where the meathead actually likes a smart girl. But I'm just like. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Do you know what's one of my favorite out of context scenes kind of like that I've ever seen? What? is Because I've never watched Letterkenny, but I see the scene oh, uh-huh. all the time where he's like, gosh, would I be good to you? And she's just like, because he's, I guess, kind of doofy. And she's just like, how? And he goes, I'd just be there in the morning being good to you. Mm-hmm. And he just keeps going. It's so sweet. You would hate Letterkenny. Really? Yes. It's because everyone is so awkward. Oh, okay. Um... You know the guy, uh, start, his name starts with a beat, Righteous Gemstones guy. Curly hair. Oh, Danny McBride. Yes. Yeah. It's like that. Okay. Except Canadian. Canadian <laughs> and more deadpan. Oh, no. <laughs> so it's, I, it was not for me. Okay. So I, just the way that you get embarrassed is yeah. very similar to oh, how I get okay. embarrassed. All right. It's, yeah. Not. So I've seen like a handful of scenes and like they, are, it seems funny they sometimes say funny at least. Things. Yeah. Yes. But there's, you, we have to endure a lot until we get the reward. Okay. Of the well, then I probably but, won't watch it. Yeah. Um, basically, I think that's the end of the episode. We yeah. did go on a lot of tangents, just like you predicted. Um, I just, the, this show is so good because. Oh, I'm so glad you're liking it this much. So good yeah and i just need it to be 30 degrees cooler outside but i like we could go on forever because so much happened in that scene with dean and rory yeah and it's just the way because oh what the, so she comes home and lorelei is calling she's like uh, dialed and holding the phone up to her ear to call max yeah and listening to his voicemail yeah. and then rory walks in the door and so she hangs up and yeah. she's like we broke up yeah and I'm just like. Well, he also does not help her out of the car no, even he remotely. Hugs when she gets there. When he gets there, he doesn't come to the door. 
I just... No, but I mean out of the car. After he's mad, he just, like, stalks away oh, from yeah, her. Oh, yeah, just walks away, doesn't and, even help her. And makes her get out of the car in her open-toed high heels and her silky dress in the fucking junkyard. How many... you? This doesn't apply to you because you've not had issues like this. How many of you, when you're with your dude or whatever, or your partner, and then you guys have a fight, and then they walk a mile away in front of you? Oh, I mean... That specifically hasn't happened to me, but also when I was in college, we hung out with like only boys for the most part that went to the Citadel Mm -hmm. and they are required to walk next to you on the roadside of the sidewalk because if they don't and an upperclassman sees them walking with a girl who's on the roadside of the sidewalk, they will get a demerit. And I, that was sort of nice. I actually didn't know that was a thing until like a handful of years ago about like walking that way that's yeah. wild but no i mean i've had countless fights where they just fucking left me in the dirt like no just straight up just walked ahead of me and i'm like oh are you so 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 tough because you can walk faster i also try like really hard not to get in fights in public yeah well i don't i really don't i don't like getting in fights in private but like i would turn myself inside out if i got in like an actual yelling fight in public oh no it wouldn't be a yelling fight it would be smart ass comments and then no then it's it's like church giggles where it's like public (sighs) fighting where you're doing it really quietly but you're just saying like the meanest things you can to each other just like quietly because you are in public and so then Mm. they walk ahead of you and then i would always because i am this way i'd be like oh are you gonna walk faster oh that's now you're really sticking it to me <laughs> and i just be like taking a leisurely stroll but like, fine i'll walk at my pace no problem <laughs> no i see uh jokes on you i have the keys yeah that has never that specifically has never happened to me yeah it hasn't happened to me in a really long time yeah because i haven't dated anyone in three years that's so that's good yeah that's great it's so nice you're not responsible for anybody else's feelings no i am not yeah go to therapy guys it's great <laughs> <laughs> she means guys I mean everyone, but I really mean, men. I mean the men's go to therapy. I also just, it's one of those things where I'm like, put your sons in therapy. Yeah. Love your sons. Like, it will hug t- them, kiss them, let them cry. And just again, do it. I think before, before every boy gets into his first serious adult relationship, he should kiss another boy on the mouth. Yeah. Do it. Just to see. Just to make sure yeah. that you're not repressing anything for the rest of your life and making it other people's problem. Yeah, that first boyfriend I talked about earlier, he kissed his male friend, and I was like, why? And he goes, just to see what all the fuss was cool. about. Cool! Love <laughs> that! <laughs> I was like, okay. Love it. Good Good for you. You know, girls kiss each other all the time, and it's like a party trick. I've kissed, like, four of my girlfriends in my life, and I'm just like... I don't know. It's just a thing. Whatever. Ridiculous. Whatever. Ridiculous. Uh, all right. ah! I'm glad that we're sober for this conversation. I think if we had had that conversation, this conversation on Friday, yeah, I, it would have been another level. <laughs> um, depending on how far we go today, we can get drunk for the last couple. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Sunday fun day. We've got some bubbles. We got some more bubbles. We have so many bubbles. Yeah. yeah. Right. I put. I think I put. I moved one from the outside bridge to the inside bridge. bridge. Yes. All right, cool. All right. (sighs) Uh, Let us know what you think. Like and subscribe. And we will be back next week. And we will also be wearing this outfit for the next four to six weeks. (laughs) Yes. Very, very fall. She inspired me with the green. It's my favorite color anyway. So I was like, I'm going to wear my little dress. This is my new, very plain old navy t-shirt. I like it. That's my favorite color. So good. My nails were that yesterday, and then I picked them off. So. Okay, bye. Bye. (laughs) 